Hi, welcome to the video. My name's Dichronic, and today I wanted to talk about my top 10 PvE primaries in Witch Queen. And of course, as always, I have made a spreadsheet for this video. Examples on screen of the past spreadsheets that I've made. This spreadsheet should help you in the recommendations for the perks and then the catalyst information and help organize all the stuff without having to keep coming back to this video. And of course, this is fully public for you guys to use. Link in the description down below, you'll find a link to my Discord server. And in the channel hashtag spreadsheet stocks, you'll find a link to this spreadsheet. And if you don't see the, the link or the, the channel, you just have to verify with the bot, more info, and hashtag announcements. And I know you guys will probably skip through this part, but truly these spreadsheets would not be possible without the Patreons. They make it so that I can actually spend 20 hours a week uh, making these spreadsheets and these videos among all the other things that I do. Otherwise, I'd have to get a part-time job just to support myself. So if you want to see these continue, please consider checking out my Patreon, where you can also get early access to some of the spreadsheets. Moving on, let's go ahead and get right into it. On screen right now, you can see my spreadsheet. Oh, it's beautiful, dark theme, color-coded with links, with extra comments information, with the rankings, with the catalyst information, for all the different weapons I was considering for this video, for all the different primary weapons, by the way, primary, not kinetic. And of course, again, this, this has all the rankings, and if you just want to use the number one because you trust me, go for it. But the reasons why you'd use it, the reasons why I think that this one's better than some of the other, other ones is going to be very important because it may change how or what you actually use. So we're going to go ahead and go through all of the different categories of weapons, talk about the best archetypes within them and where they fall in the meta. Because honestly, more than it ever has been, each weapon type has a use these days. First up, we have the bows. And although I did not put it in my top 10 because it's honestly somewhat difficult to place bows in a top 10 and generally they're one of those like you have to use it at end game kind of stuff because you need the maximum possible range and also the artifact last season overload was really really good it just feels like it's not as good as some of the other options especially considering that scouts and bows occupy the barrier rounds this season when it comes to the archetypes i like lightweights because they fire the fastest and as long as you can get the accuracy up that's perfectly fine otherwise it doesn't really matter Outside of that, the Taku's Divination and Trinity Ghoul are a lot of fun. Probably one of the more fun weapons to use in the game, even though they are a bow, they have some pretty explosive potential. After that, we have the only fusion rifle, Vex Mythoclast. Uh, most people know it, uh, and they also know that it has no particle deconstruction this season, and of course, no unstoppable rounds, which did make a big difference last season. It's not a bad weapon now, it's just not something that might be worth an exotic slot. For the only grenade launcher in primary ammo, we have the Fighting Lion, which technically is an infinite ammo grenade launcher, which can be useful. I just don't find that I need that, considering special ammo weapons very rarely, or at least special ammo grenade launchers very rarely run out of ammo and also do more damage and also have special better perks that I like. Moving on to the next category, we have the sidearms. Now this is an archetype of weapon that probably a lot of people are forgetting about, especially considering how good SMGs are these days, but the sidearms are not to be ignored. Specifically, I really like the three burst sidearms. Now if you did not see the video that I made from a while back, I actually did a sidearms test, where I actually tested the damage output of all the different types of sidearm, because I had a feeling the three burst and the two burst were better by a long shot, and they actually were. The total clip damage, uh, how fast you empty the clip, how much DPS you do, is by far making the two burst and three burst the best of the best. However, when it comes to the actual application, the two bursts are a little difficult to control, might be more of a mouse and keyboard thing, so you may prefer the brass attacks, new empirical evidence if you prefer that, but the three bursts, just incredible kills per clip, incredible damage output, and could be better than an SMG for you. Outside of that, I would also recommend the Traveler's Chosen. At 9B, it does share a slot with Monty Carlo because both of them are essentially used for builds where you need ability stuff and both of them are excellent options for that because they give you ability stuff really fast. I'll talk more about that when we get to Monte Carlo. Up next we have the submachine guns, probably one of the more popular weapon archetypes these days in PvE as they absolutely shred things at close range, which is obviously their downfall is that they're close range weapons so in the highest level they're a little bit touchy. When it comes to the archetypes, I really like the aggressive frame. 750s are the perfect intersection of control of range of magazine size which is very important because smgs you reload a lot so it's important that they last a while and of course the availability we have extra rendy and ikelos of different slots they're really nice to have now normally i don't do this but i also have at 3b we have the lightweights which again i don't usually match up different archetypes but i find that i use them for the same purpose the big difference being that the 900 rpms fire a lot faster and of course that means they run out of ammo faster and they're slightly closer range. And of course at number 10 we have the Terabo, a weapon that I've 
already thought is an amazing weapon that absolutely shreds through enemies like special or heavy ammo damage. And not only that, it's also an exotic primary, which means it does 40% more damage against miners, which is a big buff this season. On top of the other buffs it got, where, you know, you holster it, you only lose half the devour. You also get devour a lot faster. And did I mention that you can essentially just solo an overload champion with this this season because of overload SMG? Do not overlook Teraba. Teraba and Hawkmoon, in my opinion, are one of the few primary ammo weapons that absolutely exceed the primary category. Following that, let's talk about Pulse Rifles. Now, first of all, you don't know, Pulse Rifles got like 10% more damage against miners and PvE, so they all got buffed, which is really nice. Secondly, many people might disagree with the fact that I have the 390s at position 5. So let me explain. First of all, when it comes to the archetypes, the adaptive frames, again, just like almost every other archetype, perfect intersection of control, of stability, of range, of reload, of handling, availability, perk options for both slots. It's just a beautiful amalgamation of goodness. When compared to the 340s, which technically have more range, they have more control, end up being better at range. For the other side, the faster fire rate ones, the 454 burst, the 453 burst, and the 540s, if you like this zone better, absolutely use them. Although they do have less range, less aim assistance at those ranges, I would personally recommend the 390s, but if you like these, just go for it. I think that a lot of pulse rifles are somewhat interchangeable, although the fastest fire rate might be a little touchy at longer range. And of course, some people are probably going to be wondering, what about the new raid at pulse rifle? If you haven't seen my short, I'm not a big fan of it. And for the other side of things, Outbreak Perfected. It got two buffs this season, the Pulse Rival buff and the Exotic Primary buff. The problem is still the same. You have to put yourself quite vulnerable by staying out in the open to applying Nanites, which takes a long time to apply enough Nanites to get the most damage. So again, I still prefer Hawkmoon and Teraba for doing boss damage with the Primary. After that, we have the Scout Rifles. Now, the Scout Rifles are an archetype of weapon that I actually did not have in my top 10 for a really long time. I was under the opinion that the 390 Pulse Rifle were the maximum range you ever needed. And while that is still technically true, Scout Rifles have explosive payload on it, where Pulse Rifles don't. So I've kind of flipped, especially with last season and this season having artifact stuff with Scout Rifles, I've started to realize that they are somewhat interchangeable. Honestly, they can both be at position four because they're both used for the same thing. However, they're very different weapons. So if you prefer one over the other, absolutely go for it. My personal preference is gonna be the 200 RPMs, Nightwatch and Vouchsafe, both having explosive payload, which if I haven't said it enough, explosive payload makes literally every weapon in the game better. More damage for body shot, more damage headshot, more flinch, and accidentally getting hits when you shouldn't be. And in the longest range you're ever going to need, 180s would probably be better in Gambit because there's a little bit more range against invasion. Coming up at number two in this top 10 list, we have the auto rifles. Now, this is probably one of my more contentious picks here. I've, I've liked the 600 auto, auto rifles for like over two years. I think they're one of the best weapon types in the game, not only for their comfortability, of just right out of the box people understanding how to use them uh the adaptive frames specifically are the perfect intersection of range stability handling reload availability slot options last season we got scathlock and last breath finally getting some good kinetic options it's just a beautiful amalgamation of usefulness and of course they have amazing perks as well now when it comes to the other options i find the 450s and 360s have a little bit more flinch and recoil that they're not as comfortable at range as the 600 rpms very similar to some of the other options and for the other side of things the 720s which are probably the more popular set of uh, auto rifles especially considering we got two new ones and chroma rush is a big popular one i just find that there's somewhat of an awkward middle zone of range between the 600 rpm adaptives and as SMGs. I would just rather use one or the other. And finally, we have the Monte Carlo, which is not only a 600 RPM, it also has the ability to maintain your melee without actually having to actually get a kill. You just have to do damage with this weapon, you get your melee, which could then probably get your grenade, etc, etc. The Monte Carlo and the Traveler's Chosen are excellent build weapons for abilities. And finally, we have hand cannons. Hand cannons are a staple of Destiny 2 and pretty much dominant for the entirety of the whole series, except for when Destiny 1 first released, they were hot garbage. But other than that, they have always been a very strong archetype of weapon. There's a few things you do have to understand about hand cannons first though. Firstly, they have a higher skill floor, higher skill ceiling. So if they don't feel good to you, it does take some time. On top of their obviously higher precision multiplier, which means it rewards higher skill play. Secondly, they have the perfect middle zone range with their decent 
decent at closer range, they're decent at long range, and they dominate in the middle zone. Thirdly, something that not a lot of people realize is that a poorly rolled hand cannon feels really bad compared to a very well rolled hand cannon with explosive payload, good reload, good handling, feels really good. So getting a good roll matters a lot more to hand cannons in my opinion than a lot of the other weapons. And fourthly, probably one of the bigger higher level stuff is peak shooting. The ability to go in and out of cover and maintain the damage output with a hand cannon as opposed to like an auto rifle is very strong. When it comes down to the different archetypes of hand cannons, the 180s fire a little too fast to take advantage of peak cover. They don't have enough magazine ammo, which they did buff it. I still don't think they have enough. And they're again, awkward middle zone of range where I'd rather use an SMG G, an auto rifle, and a 140, etc. On the other side of the spectrum, we have the 120s. Although they did get a pretty big nerf uh, last season, they've lost a lot of range, their handling and reload got a little bit worse, and drop mag overall got kind of tanked. I still think that they're a good weapon archetype. They can still peak shoot in and out of cover at a farther range than that of the 140s, making them ideal for the highest level play. And that slowness of handling and reload in higher level play is not usually a massive issue. Furthermore, True Prophecy, bottom dollar, still available, still with explosive payload, which are still incredible to use. However, hands down at number one is definitely gonna be the 140 adaptive frame hand cannons. And above everything else, we have Fatebringer and Palindrome, which technically have stat advantages over all the other hand cannons. I think Palindrome having the best configuration and Fatebringer having not only explosive payloads, but a damage perk like Frenzy and Kill Clip that can combine with it. Two different damage perks, flinch things, etc. on one weapon. On top of the fact that you get it once and then spend all your conquests at the end chest to get more of them. Fatebringer and honestly Palindrome are examples of a power creep weapon. They are just better than all the other options. Now you may prefer using some other options because of your role or you really like Headstone or Isoluna's model, but Fatebringer and a Palindrome are objectively better weapons because of their perk options and their stats. If you don't believe me, Take a look. And finally, at number six, we have Hawkmoon, a weapon that I've been supporting for a long time that not a lot of people really talked about. Firstly, it's a 140 hand cannon, making it, again, very similar to the 140s, an ideal option for Adslay. Secondly, it does nearly Izanagi's times four honed edge damage with its final shot as a infinite ammo primary weapon. And thirdly, hand cannon unstoppable in the artifact, making it the triple threat to actually be used in Grandmaster Nightfalls and actually worth the exotic slot in a lot of scenarios. And you know me, I really like special and heavy exotics. Galahorn, Sleeper, Ariana's, Wither Horde, uh, Arbalist, just to name a few, are definitely my preferred option, but Hawkmoon still makes appearances because it's so damn good. Especially if you can get Rangefinder. I would recommend Rangefinder. It's the one thing it lacks a little bit is, is range, so get Rangefinder on it and it will be good. And of course, again, these videos wouldn't be possible without my patrons on Patreon. So I want to give a special shout out to my tier three Patreons, uh, which again, link in the description down below if you want to get on these. Specifically, I want to give a big thank you to Mom and Dad, Kristen Thompson, Doctor Strange, Kelly Alla, my niece, the Bachman, Roman Schoener, you Panther, Casey Reagan, Father Spot on Patreon. And that's it. Hope you guys did enjoy. My name's Iconic, and I'll see you guys on the next one.